Welcome to Where Are They Now? We reach into the archives of Lenape, Shawnee, Cherokee, and Seneca High Schools and invite selected alumni to share memories and fill us in on their career paths after commencement. Since Lenape's first graduating class in 1961, Shawnee's in 1972, Cherokee's in 1978, and Seneca's in 2005, over 75,000 individuals have received diplomas from these four schools. Hello and welcome to another edition of Where Are They Now? I'm Mark Sancini, a 1996 graduate of Cherokee High School, and today we'll be talking with a Lenape alumna from the class of 2012. She is an aerospace engineer at the NASA Langley Research Center residing in Hampton, Virginia. I'd like to welcome Jessica Snyder Frizz to the show. Jessica, welcome. Hi, Mark. Thanks. Great to have you here today, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing about your exciting career. First, let's go back and talk a little bit about your time at Lenape. So you grew up in Mount Laurel? Uh, that's right. And any siblings here at Lenape? I had two. I had an older sister and a younger brother. And what years were they? Uh, my sister, Michelle Snyder, she was class of 2007, and my younger brother, Matthew Snyder, was uh, four years behind me, so class of 2008. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some of the teachers that had an impact on you at your time here at Lenape. Um, number one was Mr. Hessler. Yes, he was my physics teacher and astronomy teacher. Um, definitely, a, definitely a popular one at the school. Uh, but I took AP physics with him uh, both my junior and senior years, and I took astronomy with him, I think, um, my senior year as well. And you, uh, we were talking before the show, and you mentioned... Um, I think your first physics test, uh, you didn't do so well on, but he uh, didn't give up on you. Tell us about that. Oh, yeah. I, you know, looking back at it, I don't think a lot of people did very well on their first test in AP Physics. <laughs> um, it's, it's a challenging class, and Mr. Hessler always did his best to try and put the concepts in really easy ways to understand. Um, but physics is it's hard, you know. Yeah. So I left the room feeling fairly defeated, but I think other students did also, and that kind of gave Mr. Hessler uh, the, um, the extra boost to take the subjects with us a little bit more slowly and carefully and found better ways to communicate the ideas to us. And that was, that was really influential, you know, not only in my understanding of the subject, but also how I approach trying to teach others. All right, and Mrs. Jensen was another one that had an impact on you, math teacher. Yeah. Math was always my favorite subject, but she was just one of those teachers that was just super encouraging and sweet. Um, she really amplified my love of the subject, and um, you know, she had asked me to join the math league because of how well I did in class. And and that you know, it's it's always good to be around other people who appreciate similar subjects as you. Sure, absolutely. And amplified your excitement over it. And Mrs. Hecht, you had for Latin. Yes, um, she was Magistra Thorne when I started. She got married a few years after um, I started high school. But Mrs. Hecht taught me Latin for four years straight. Um, it just kept coming back because she made the subject fun, and my classmates and I always had a good time with her. And it doesn't have much of an effect on my, um, you know, my skills nowadays as an aerospace engineer. But it definitely inspired a love for learning. Um, you know, through taking her classes. And two music teachers, Steve Waldron and the late Tom Traub. Yeah, um, I come from a musical family with musical background, lots of singers, guitar players, piano players, um, and it's kind of something I wanted to con continue doing uh, even through high school. So I took choir every year with Mr. Traub. He always made things fun also. He was very witty, um, sarcastic, which made the classes um, humorous, but uh, added a lot of camaraderie to the class because of it as well. Uh, and Mr. Waldron, I, I never actually took a class with him, but he was our band director for the marching band for four years. And he is the kind of person that always inspires um, perfection and excellence. And because of that, um, you know, we won competitions every single year I was part of the band. And I think my senior year, we went undefeated at every single competition we went. So wow. that kind of inspiration from him at trying to make yourself um, better, um, 
you know, that, that definitely has an influence on what I've been like growing up and how I've gotten to where I am now. And you became the color guard captain, and that um, gave you a good learning experience on how to be a leader and a mentor, right? Yeah, it did. Uh, Mr. Waldron and the other band directors gave me that opportunity senior year, and I wouldn't say I did it perfectly by any means, um, but they did give me that opportunity to learn, and, and through my mistakes, I feel I've grown to become a better leader over time. Okay. So it was important. It was yeah. important to me. Good. Some other activities you were involved in, National Honor Society, uh, the pep band, you played the bass drum uh, in the wintertime of the basketball games. And uh, you also volunteered at the STEP program at Harrington High School, or Harrington Middle School, excuse me. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I've kind of always had a passion for volunteerism. I've been doing it since I was little, um, ever since I was a Girl Scout. Um, and I just kind of continued doing that kind of stuff even through high school. I participated in the STEP program uh, while I was in middle school, so fifth through eighth grade. And then when I, um, came into high school, I, I kind of wanted to give back to the program. And so I did that through volunteering every spring. I don't I don't think I did it over the summer. It's kind of having a hard time remembering, but that, that's what I did every spring. Tell, and, us a little, tell us a little bit about the program for those maybe who aren't familiar with it. Sure, uh, I can't remember what STEP stands for, but it was a theater program provided by um, Harrington Middle School. Uh, Mr. Jack Jacket was the one who was our uh, director and his wife, Christine Jackett, the two of them came up with these plays and all of the original music, gave um, local students an opportunity to get into theater, singing, dancing, acting. Um, and that was that was really inspiring for a lot of students. Uh, I have multiple friends who participated in the program with me back then who are now, you know, professional artists now. They're actors, they're singers. Um, even my sister, um, she was big into that program and that's kind of led her to end up you know, pursuing a career in theater. So very cool. I think that that program is really important for kids uh, who love the arts. Um, and for those of us who didn't go into the arts, I mean, it kind of gave us an opportunity to build up our confidence when we're in front sure. of crowds. Uh, it definitely has helped me improve my communication skills. So some other special memories from Lenape uh, that we talked about before the show was Red and Gray Night, which you got to be a captain for one year. Tell us about that. I did. I was elected as one of the great team captains, I think, my junior year. And to be honest at this point, I don't really remember the reason why I was elected, <laughs> uh, but I suppose it was an honor. Uh, and I got to kind of be up there with um, some other colleagues from my class, and we got to just instill some school pride in other people and make it fun and yeah, just just fun, you know. Did you get to a, a compete in any? It. Did you get to compete in any crazy events? Um, I think there was some kind of competition with the Red and Grey Knight uh, that year, but I don't really think so. It's been no. a really long time. Nothing six. <laughs> okay. Um, any friends from Lenape that you're still in touch with? Oh, sure. Um, my best friend Siani graduated with me, um, and uh, we still chat all the time. And then I've got other friends, like friends who I took a lot of my math and science classes with that I still see regularly and chat with regularly, um, see them annually, normally around the holidays. Um, Great. And, you know, other, a few other friends here and there that I graduated with. Um, so I should consider myself lucky to have, you know, so many good friends still from, from high school. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so you graduate from Lenape, and then you go to Rowan University, and you get your uh, bachelor's in mechanical engineering with a concentration in astronomy. Mm -hmm. And during your time there is when you start your internship with uh, NASA. Tell us how that. Tell us how you got into that. So uh, Rowan tried to encourage students to do internships, and you know, on a whim, one year we got notification of an internship program uh, specifically through NASA Langley Research Center. Me and a few other students all applied, um, and I, I got in, uh, surprisingly to me, because I had no previous internship experience or work experience. Um, I had that first internship, went really well. Um, I worked with a few other students and had a couple of really good mentors. And after that, I just ended up coming back over and over again to the same center. It was through some different programs. Um, through different internship programs that NASA hosts. Okay. But I just kept coming back every summer, and by the time I finished undergrad, 
um, and I was about to start graduate school, I applied for a specific kind of internship program called the Pathways Program. Okay. These are um, civil servant internship programs for the federal government. Um, so you could work part time while you're going to school, and when you graduate, um, that can um, lead you to an opportunity where you could become a permanent civil servant. Okay. So that's kind of your path to where you got now. Before we get there, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Some more sure. things you did uh, at Rowan. You volunteered uh, with FIRST Robotics, um, which was something you didn't get involved in in your time at Lenape here. Yeah, you know, looking back, I kind of think maybe I should have been participating in uh, FIRST Robotics while I was in high school. I was friends with a lot of the people on the teams uh, and very supportive of them while they were participating. Um, but after I graduated from high school, I decided I wanted to go back and get involved. Um, I love doing STEM outreach, and FIRST Robotics seemed like a really appropriate way to do that. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think it worked out, so it's okay. Um, yeah. Also, during your time at Rowan, uh, you were in some different organizations building things from um, rockets to planes to blimps to uh, off-road Baja cars. Tell us about some of that. Um, sure. I've, I've always kind of grown up a you know, creative, hands-on person, um, very artsy, and I think that kind of influenced my desire to want to build things in undergrad. Uh, it's another reason why I wanted to become a mechanical engineer, because we're the kinds of engineers that love to touch things and see things working, sure. um, you know, mechanically. So I got involved with the Baja, you know, the Baja team just because it was an opportunity for me to build something and build something that we could actually use and you know drive around that's kind of fun you know yeah and we could take it to competitions and um, you know who doesn't love that kind of stuff sure. <laughs> but you know I've always kind of had it in my heart that I I wanted to be you know an aerospace engineer and that really wasn't an opportunity for me um, you know in New Jersey so I kind of wanted to pave my own path while I was at Rowan. So a couple of other students in my class started the Aerospace Club, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Okay. And I decided to join it early on. And you know, once we started the club, we kind of took it in any direction we wanted to. So we ended up building rockets, our very first one. It's a really small thing, you know? Yeah. Start small. And from there, the club just kept growing and we started building um, RC aircraft and uh, blimps for the school, and I kind of got involved in everything a little bit, uh, but especially the rocketry stuff. That was a lot of fun. It, it sounds like it. So you met, you mentioned that you you knew from pretty young that you wanted to be an aerospace engineer. Was that your at your time at Lenape? You kind of figured that out, or even before Just that? Before actually. Okay. Um, my, my eighth grade year, uh, one of my science teachers at Harrington. Um, spent a week talking to us about astronomy and astrobiology and that was kind of when I knew that that was something I I found really inspiring and I wanted to pursue and ever since then I've just kind of kept going in that direction. Okay so after Rowan um, you finish up your undergrad and then you're off to Old Dominion University uh, in mm -hmm. Virginia for aerospace engineering and as you mentioned that's when you started uh, working part-time at NASA through the program that you were in. Yeah, um, the the Pathways program is available to undergraduate and graduate students. I just didn't want to do it until I was a graduate student. Okay. Um, but I started working full time in the summers, um, you know, before s the semester started, and then during the semester I worked part time. And this went on for three years while I was finishing my masters. And when I graduated and completed my internship, I was offered a full time permanent position in my branch. Okay. Is that the same position you're in now where you, you develop low to high fidelity simulators for aircraft and spacecraft? Is that where you started? It's actually not where I started. Um, okay. I've bounced around between a few different branches since I started the internships at NASA. I started in um, the space mission analysis branch doing a lot of systems engineering work, just conceptual stuff. Okay. Uh, my first Pathways internship uh, when I started graduate school was with the projects and engineering branch where we did a lot of um, building, maintenance, and construction across the center that supports the facilities that uh, researchers need to do their research. And then I ended up applying for the position I'm in now, which is the flight simulation, uh, the simulation development and analysis branch, where we develop flight simulators. And I continued with that for a few years before I graduated. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about 
what you do as far as the simulators. Um, I think most of us hear a simulator, they think of, you know, you get in a machine and, and you pretend like you're flying a spacecraft or an aircraft. Uh, what exactly in part of that um, production are you involved with? Um, so our simulators look just like that. You know, some of them are stationary and some of them are motion on a motion base. Um, so similar to the flight simulators you might see in like a museum or something like that that you can fly for a few minutes. Um, except the the cockpits that we have are um, you know high fidelity, uh, lots of different buttons and switches and lights that respond the exact same way the real aircraft or spacecraft would work. Okay. Um, I don't work on the hardware, I work on the software development. Um, okay. So I help program the simulators how they should operate uh, based on you know real equations of motion, real physics, um, and the designs of the aircraft as they were intended. Okay. Though sometimes we develop simulators for um, systems that aren't really fully developed yet and we kind of have some flexibility to influence how uh, we simulate those vehicles. Okay, very interesting. And. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of uh, work to give back as well. You received a NASA award for equal employment opportunity um, due to a lot of the STEM work and outreach that you're doing. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, I don't like to spend all of my time just focusing on the technical stuff. Um, doing STEM outreach and giving back to my community is something really important to me, and so I invest a lot of time in it, um, not just outside in the community, but also within NASA. Uh, I help support various employee resource groups that we have at NASA. These are groups that support uh, minorities within the agency. Um, so employees um, that might need a little bit more representation, a little bit more love. Okay. Um, but in addition to that, I also do STEM outreach with my local community, um, serving underprivileged children in my, you know, in my town, uh, doing STEM outreach with them and trying to tutor them and inspire them. But, you know, while we've been working virtually uh, during the pandemic, um, I've been doing a lot more uh, virtual outreach. Even schools who normally don't get to have a NASA presence now are able to reach out to NASA and have engineers come talk to their students. Um, I think it's been kind of influential for teachers and students all across the country. So I think, in a way, some of it's been good. Absolutely. Very cool. There's a lot of movement today on gender equality and stuff like that, and, and I feel like your field has historically been male-dominated. Is that something that you, know, you find is changing? What are your feelings on that? Uh, the field is changing. There are more women joining the workforce all the time, but it's still a slow process. Uh, the workforce is still predominantly male. Um, however, I'm, I'm grateful to have you know, an abundance of other female engineering friends within the agency who are just, you know, incredible workers and um, contribute a lot to their fields. And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of that group. Um, and, you know, even now I'm still trying to bring in new interns all the time. I'll talk to students who are looking for internships um, and, you know, talk to both, you know, men and women. Uh, I've got a couple of interns right now. They're both they're both young women, um, mm -hmm. and they do fantastic jobs. So, you know, I, I hope to leverage my position as a female engineer working at NASA to inspire others to join the field as well. Yeah, I'm sure you're doing that, and especially you know with your outreach efforts um, that you're doing that I know is very important to you as well. I'm sure that that will be the case. So, yeah, it's. It's important to me, it's, it's part of what fuels my desire to do more outreach, yes. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the interesting stuff going on at NASA right now. I know the Artemis uh, mission is, is one that's been in the news lately. Tell us about that. Sure, uh, the Artemis mission is uh, NASA's mission to put the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024. Um, and with that program comes a lot of technology development in a few different areas. For instance, the launch vehicle that we're going to use to actually put the astronauts back up into orbit and on their way to the moon, we're going to be using the Space Launch System, uh, or SLS. We've got the Orion Space Capsule. Um, for those of you who remember the Apollo program, um, there were the capsules that the astronauts sat in. Um, sure. So the Orion is the new version of that capsule. Okay. Um, and then you've got people developing other various technologies that will be used, like the Lunar Lander. Uh, that's one of the simulators we're actually developing in my branch. Okay. Lunar Lander will take the astronauts down from orbit down to the surface of the moon. 
Um, and then there's a few other pieces of technology that'll help them during their mission to enable their mission work. So that's kind of the big ticket item uh, for NASA right now, but there's a lot of other work going on in the aeronautics and even the space exploration field right now um, outside of Artemis. Uh, would Mars be one of those? So I, I, the question here is when are we gonna get to Mars? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, so NASA's focus being on putting people back on the moon uh, is to help us get to Mars. Um, the idea with sending people to Mars is to be able to send them there for a long period of time. And we need to know that we're capable of keeping people alive on another planet for a long period of time and to bring them back and help them do their science. Um, so the moon is kind of a stepping stone because we can easily send people to the moon and bring them back and have them okay. practice living on the surface of the moon uh, and make sure they have all the infrastructure they need. Okay. And then once we have a good amount of research under our belt for that, we can start setting people off to Mars. So we're probably a few years away from that yet. Still a few years away from that, yeah. Okay. Maybe more than a few. Okay. <laughs> so have you, I, another question that comes to mind is, are you, have you ever wanted to go into space? I would like to go into space, but I have no desire to be an astronaut. And why is that? Um, being an astronaut, it's a lot of work, uh, a lot of time, a lot of training, a lot of things you have to remember. <laughs> and, um, you know, it also comes with, you know, being launched on, you know, various systems from different places. And I, it's just, a, it's a lot of time commitment. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I'd like to think that one day we'll have uh, the capability of sending up people to space commercially where you can just buy a really expensive ticket and go <laughs> to space for a week. That'd be cool for me. All right. So you'll, you'll be one of the first in line for that. Probably. OK. Yeah. Um, let's switch over to your family and, and interests outside of work for a little bit. Uh, you married Paul in 2019. Uh, you guys met um, during your Langley internship. Yeah, a few years ago at this point. Uh, we met each other in 2016. Uh, I think I was, yeah, I was still a, no, I was a Pathways intern and he was too. So we were part of the same Pathways program. Uh, and we just made good friends at that time. And uh, August of 2017, we started dating and a few years later got engaged and we got married in November of 2019. Terrific. And he works at NASA as well, right? He does. And yeah. what, is, what does he do there? He is also an aerospace engineer, and he does life cycle cost analysis. Okay, so a little bit different from where you are. Yeah, we, we work in different buildings, um, definitely different different types of projects, but yeah. we, we both happen to be working on the Artemis um, mission, so that, okay. that we have in common. Very cool. Um, you have two cats at home. Some of your hobbies that you like are uh, baking, cooking, music, and camping. Tell us about that. Oh yeah, we've got our two fur babies at home. Um, they're both kind of chilling right now, um, but they're good. We've had them for three years since they were little. And um, outside of work, just to relax, uh, I do do a lot of baking, a lot of pie baking, something that Paul and I bonded over. Um, I've also kind of ventured into some French food cooking, which has been kind of fun and adventurous. What's your favorite um, thing to make? My favorite, th my favorite thing to make is definitely pie. Okay. Yeah, something uh, was common from the first time that we met each other, kind of realized we both love baking pies. And so that's been kind of <laughs> one of our themes since we started dating. Very cool. Um, uh, and then you've been camping in uh, Shenandoah National Park. Yeah, I think, I mean, I've been camping in a lot of different places, but Shenandoah is one of the closest ones to where we live. And we, Paul and I like to go there with our friends fairly often. Um, they've got a lot of different lovely trails, um, but we've gone camping in other places as well together. Oh, looking forward to doing a little bit more camping once the weather gets a little bit warmer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you've been to Hawaii and some other places around the U.S. visiting uh, family and friends. Where do you like to go? Uh, well, so my family is from New Jersey, obviously where I grew up, and then uh, Paul's family is from Missouri, from St. Louis, and uh, so we travel between those two places fairly often, um, but just recently we did a, a tour to New England where we drove up through Pennsylvania and Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. Uh, that was really lovely. We were there during the fall while the leaves were all changing color. Very nice. Beautiful outside. 
Um, but we've been to Florida, um, you know, visited the Kennedy Space Center a few times. Okay. And we've been out to West Virginia for some really fun camping trips as well. Um, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of places we haven't gone. I mean, we've only been dating for a few years and we meant to travel a lot more during the pandemic. Um, yeah. But, you know, for safety reasons, we didn't. So sure. we're kind of looking forward to being able to go out and travel a lot more. So what's next on the list? This has been the big question. Uh, <laughs> we were going to go to Hawaii for our one year anniversary again, okay. this is where we went on our honeymoon. Um, but I think, you know, if we don't go to Hawaii, um, I don't know. There's just too many places we want to go. We want to go to Southern Utah to see a whole bunch of national parks. We want to go to California. We want to go visit, you know, Iceland or Greenland. Cool. All very good choices. I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. <laughs> so you're also uh, studying to get your pilot's license. Yes, uh, it's been something I've been meaning to do since I was 14 years old. Um, my husband has his pilot's license. Uh, so it's been kind of nice since we started dating. We've done a lot of flying together and I've been getting a better hold on it. And so this year uh, I decided um, I would start getting my pilot's license and I'm about 11 hours in at this point. Um, need another like 30 or 40 hours though. So okay. not quite there yet. All right, you'll get there. Um, all right, one other thing we have to talk about. You and your husband uh, were invited on a TV show, uh, which is at the time we're taping, that's very close to premiering uh, for Discovery uh, Network called Rocket Around the Christmas Tree. Now tell us what this is all about. So I, I build model and high power rockets as a hobby now in my free time. Okay. And the Discovery Channel decided to host this special Christmas competition called Rocket Around the Christmas Tree, where three teams would compete um, building various holiday themed rockets. Okay. Uh, not your traditional kind of rocket, um, launching uh, different like Christmas like decorations essentially. Okay. Uh, and this was inspired by a, a group that launches Christmas trees every year. Um, so, anyhow, we got. Well, wait. Uh, it, so it, it, let's not glaze stage. over that. You, you told me about this before the show, and I, I had no idea this was a thing. And I think it's crazy. Um, but so there's a group. They take uh, actual Christmas trees and they attach rockets to them and they blast them off. They do. In a very safe manner, I should say. Um, of course. We don't, um, you know, with rocketry, safety is really, really important. Um, so when the Christmas tree launches happen, um, people are standing way, way far away. Um, this is like the beauty of technology. You can have your launch box far, far away when you <laughs> right. launch it. Uh, but it's a pretty fantastic thing to watch. And the show, uh, it's pretty funny and pretty thrilling. So I, I would definitely encourage people to take a look if they have okay. the time. So you're not just, I know you can't tell us too much about the show, but you're not just launching trees, you're launching other sorts of various holiday themed things. That's right. Okay. And this is a competition where if you can be voted off if it doesn't go high enough or if it doesn't have the right trajectory, well, how does it work? Yeah, there's a, there are a couple of rules for, for the competition that you have to, you know, you have to follow if you, if you, you meet those, uh, you know, if you win the parts of the competition that matter, you get to go on. So okay. that's about all I can say about it. Okay, you, you can't tell us if you had success or not. No, nope. you're just gonna have to watch the show and find we'll, out. We'll watch the show, very excellent. Jessica, congratulations on all your success uh, so far in your short time since you uh, left Lenape. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best in the future. Good luck with the Artemis program. We'll all be watching that. And uh, thanks a lot for joining us, stay well. Yeah, thanks Mark, and thanks everybody. Have a good one. And that'll do it for this episode of Where Are They Now? For other Lenape District alumnus interviews, check us out online at youtube.com slash Lenape District TV. Thanks, we'll see you next time.